Let's discuss Excel terminology. And this is important so that we're all on the same page. The basic building block of Excel is the cell. And you can see an example of a cell up here in the top left corner. The cell is actually kind of a, a cool structure in Excel. It holds things. It'll hold values. And that's the power of Excel because you can put different values inside that Excel. And then we can use a cell reference. The cell reference of this cell right here, you see in the upper left box there is A1. The cell reference is like the address so that we can refer to that cell and actually extract the value from it. And that is useful when we're using formulas. You see an example of a formula right here. We can put a cell reference inside that formula, but we could also put values. And you'll see the values 1, 2, and 3 in that sum formula. When we take cells and we put them together horizontally, we call that a row. So this box right here becomes a row. When we put them vertically, we call that a column. And columns are labeled with letters and rows are labeled with numbers. And that the combination makes a cell reference. Usually when we do some sort of two-dimensional collection of cells, we'll call that a range. Although technically a column and a row, they are ranges as well. And you'll see when we reference a range, there's a colon. So E12 to H19, that's the top left corner of this range, clear down to the bottom right corner of H19. When we take a collection of cells, we end up with a worksheet. And worksheets are represented by these tabs down in the bottom left. And when we put a collection of worksheets together, we call that a workbook. One last thing I want to point out is what I call a magic box. The magic box appears when you've highlighted a cell. And it's just a little bold little square in the right lower right corner of that cell. And when you hover your mouse over it, your cursor will change. And we're going to be referring to that as the magic box. And we'll show you that we can do some really cool things with that. When you open up a brand new worksheet in Excel, you're going to see just a bunch of cells. All these little boxes are cells. Cells contain information, and that information can change. Each cell has a cell reference. You can think of it as an address. So the cell in the upper left corner, its reference is A1. And you can see the reference up here in the name box in the upper left hand corner. If I select more than one cell, then I'm dealing with a range. And a range is usually two or more adjacent cells. So this is range A1 to D7. A1 to D7. And you can see that rows in Excel are labeled with numbers and columns are labeled with letters. And so a row, a series of adjacent cells that go horizontally we call a row. Um, sometimes it can be the entire row in the spreadsheet or sometimes it can just be uh, part of the row. In other words, just a few of the columns. Now cells can contain values. So in A1, I can put the value 6. And if I reference that value somewhere else, you can see that I'm using the cell reference to do so. So C1 now contains whatever value is in A1. And if I go change the value of A1 to 8, the value in C1 changes as well. So C1 is using the cell reference of A1. When we take a collection of cells and we stick it on a worksheet, so all of these cells right here are a worksheet. And worksheets are organized into workbooks. So I can add different worksheets down here in the left-hand corner and I can put multiple worksheets in a workbook. So an Excel file is a workbook. That's the highest point in the hierarchy of the Excel breakdown. You go from a workbook to an individual worksheet 
and then you go from worksheets contains rows and columns and cells and ranges. So that's the basic terminology dealing with the building blocks of Excel. One other thing that's really important is a formula. So we saw an example of a formula in C1. A formula always begins with equals and we'll review this later. And so C1 contains the formula that references A1. We can also put in other formulas that contain functions. So if I want to sum up 1, 2, and 3 in C1, C1 contains a formula that evaluates to the value 6. So keep formulas and values separate.